Live. Look who's back here, sitting next to me, no less, in New York City, Ryan Payne, the man himself. Welcome back, Ryan. Stuart, feels good to be here. Ratings are going up. I'm here. <laughs> oh, 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 careful, son. Uh, why will inflation persist? Well, I think you have to remember, first off, the Fed has removed transitory from their, you know, essentially their, their lexicon at this point. They're not using it anymore. But ironically, some of that inflation is going to be transitory because these supply chains, they're going to get figured out, right? right. This is America. You know, we figure out a way when we have lack of supply, we go out there and you know, we'll make more semiconductors. We'll, we'll do what we need to do to create supply. So but it, it persists at the 4 or 5% level for a few months into 2022, you think? That's right. Right now we're almost 7%, which is yes, outrageous. Right. It's like yeah. the 70s all over again, which was a great time for rock and roll, bad time for the economy. So I think when you look at it from that perspective, we have to remember it is going to come down. But it's going to be much higher than we saw the last decade because we were under 2% for the whole decade. It was very disinflationary. So what you have to look at is it's all about labor. And the problem is we have like 11 million job openings right now. People are quitting at like record. Four million people quit jobs last month because there's opportunity to go somewhere else. But my bigger concern is there's only like 5 million people that are looking for jobs that are unemployed. That means the gap between the 11 million jobs available and those who are unemployed looking for jobs is so huge. Even if they find jobs, there's still too many jobs available, which means wages are probably going to have to continue to go higher. Okay. I saw a figure the other day that the net asset value of American households has moved up to a record of $144 trillion. That's how much American households are worth. I think you, is that accurate? I believe it is. Somewhere around there. It's the highest ever. That's yeah. an enormous amount of money. It's the highest ever. Isn't yes. that another explanation as to why people don't necessarily want to go back to work. They can afford to stay home. They can afford to retire early. Well, that's a great point, right? Baby boomers during the pandemic, you know, maybe reevaluate their situation. Maybe they didn't like their job and said, hey, look, my stock portfolio is at the highest level ever. My real estate value is at the highest yeah. level ever. And they've just left the workforce. They're not going to return. So that gap is huge, which means if I'm an employer, which I am, I'm sweating it, Stuart, is it's going to be just such a competitive labor market, which means I've got to keep raising the wages for my workers as other companies do. Why is that? A, is that a problem for the stock market? I don't think it is. Okay. Not necessarily right now, only because what you're seeing right now is companies are raising their prices. Okay, so would you be buying this dip? Oh, absolutely. You Wildly would. bullish. There's Wildly just too bullish. much cash out there, Stuart. It's got to go somewhere. If you're seeing cash right now, you lost 7% in purchasing power the last 12 months because inflation. Money's got to go somewhere. Money managers have been sitting in cash for too long. They didn't listen to Ryan Payne when he said, get invested. And right now, you've got too much pressure to be invested. Very interesting. And the Dow, the Dow is still down 300, but the Nasdaq has come back to positive territory. Ryan Payne, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank we'll you, see Stuart. you soon.